Hello! Welcome, denizens, to another TV Guide Fall Preview video from your friendly former Network Executive Reaction. This time, we are going to get into our TV Guide time machine and go all the way back to 1973. And let me tell you, if you watched my 1972 TV Guide Fall Preview show, which was an incredible year for popular shows. 1973 was not. It was terrible. You can stop watching now or join me in this orgy of mediocrity. Are you ready? Here we go. TV Guide Fall Preview 1973. We'll skip over the schedule page. I'm going to come back to this in a later show. The challenges of being a TV programmer. So let's check out the Changes page. You might be interested in All in the Family, Archie Bunker has some new neighbors to offend, an Irish-Italian couple. They've given Banachek a girlfriend. Sounds like a network note to me. They've changed the show The Little People into The Brian Keith Show, most likely because the name Little People just didn't catch on. The new Dick Van Dyke Show is moving its location from Arizona to Hollywood. This is the typical panic move by the networks because sometimes they'll try an outside of LA location and then it doesn't work and they panic because it's just nothing to do with show business. <laughs> and they just drag it back to some familiar Hollywood setting so they can have all these stars, guest stars, show up on the show for no reason. If you remembered the Cleavon Little Show, temperatures rising from my last 1972 video, well, they fired everyone but Cleavon and renamed it The New Temperatures Rising. Yeah, that, that's going to work better. The ubiquitous Paul Lind joined the cast, but the show still didn't work and was canceled. My mom used Future Floor Polish, it built up and eventually looked like crap. This was back in the day when the kitchen linoleum had to look like a freshly Zambonied ice rink with the water still glistening on it. ABC Suspense Movies. ABC. This is a series of made-for-TV films unrelated to each other except for the fact that they are all meant to give Saturday Night Viewers goose pimples. Some of the themes are fictitious accounts of crimes. Some dramatize the villainy of real criminals. Once a month, this slot will be filled by the Six Million Dollar Man. Okay, so there's not a lot of info about this. The networks were all experimenting with shows made up of movies of the week. Yes, this is where The Six Million Dollar Man was gestated and officially became a weekly show in 1974. One movie that really stood out was Killdozer, a sci-fi episode featuring Clint Walker, Carl Betts, and Robert Urich. A meteorite lands on Earth where a bulldozer rams into it, causing a mysterious power to possess a huge caterpillar D9, which then goes on a human killing rampage. My kind of fun. But the real star of this series was... The Six Million Dollar Man, ABC. Colonel Steve Austin, astronaut and test pilot, is badly injured when he crashes while testing an experimental aircraft. A covert government agency, OSI, is willing to pay for special prosthetics to replace his eye, arm, and both legs he lost in the crash. Highly advanced technology, bionics built into them, will make him faster, stronger, and better than normal. In return, they want him to become a covert agent for the OSI, starring Lee Majors. Richard Anderson, and sometimes Lindsay Wagner, aired for five seasons. I don't know what else to add. This was must-watch TV viewing for me. I will say that network television loved experimenting back then with high-concept shows like this. There was Time Tunnel and Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, My Mother the Car, Flying Nun, Beverly Hillbillies. There is none of that now. The saturation of fantasy and superhero shows no longer makes them 
high concept as far as I'm concerned. I miss that era of goofy network fun experimenting. Although I thought The Good Place managed to resurrect quite uh, quite a bit of that experience. Griff, ABC, TV crime show starring Canadian Lauren Green and Ben Murphy, killed off after 12 episodes. They had to hire Griff to find out who killed it. The new Perry Mason, CBS, a remake of the 1957 courtroom drama starring Monty Markham, lasted only 15 episodes. The original series lasted nine seasons. It was the first Hollywood weekly one-hour series filmed for TV. Raymond Burr, who played Mason, was Canadian. Right, no false advertising here. Diana, NBC. After a divorce, beautiful Brit Diana Smythe decides to begin a new life by moving from London to New York City and starting a new career as a fashion coordinator at a Fifth Avenue department store starring Diana Rigg, Barbara Berry, and Richard Shul. Lasted only 15 episodes. Sample episode. After receiving obscene phone calls, Diana gets an answering machine and the attentions of a police officer. Ooh. As a huge Avengers fan, I can't recall why I didn't sample this show. Maybe I had and just didn't remember it. Lots of luck. NBC. New York City Bus Company's lost and found department manager and bachelor Stanley Belmont lives with his bossy mother, his sister Olive, and her unemployed husband Arthur, all of who live off of Stanley. Starring Dom DeLuise, Kathleen Freeman, Wynne Irwin, Beverly Sanders, and Jack Knight. Lasted one season. Sample episode. Frustrated at the rising cost of living and Arthur's continuing unemployment, Stanley gives Arthur an ultimatum. Get a job or he'll get no more food paid for by Stanley. Arthur agrees, but another complication arises. Arthur doesn't have a presentable suit for a job interview. Arthur borrows an expensive suit from the bus company's lost and found department. You can tell how that's going to end up. Lots of Luck was based on the Britcom on the buses. Personally, I never found on the buses or, or the uh, are you being served era of British sitcoms particularly funny. But I do remember enjoying uh, Lots of Luck. Dom DeLuise was a genuinely infectious, funny performer. The pedigree of the creators of this show, Sam Denoff, Bill Persky, and Carl Reiner, was impeccable. It still failed. The Magician, NBC. Anthony Blake is a very compassionate and wealthy magician who uses his talents as an illusionist and escape artist to help people in trouble. Max Pomeroy, a friend who is a syndicated columnist, is his sidekick. He is motivated to help because he had been falsely imprisoned in South America for espionage. Starring Bill Bixby, and Keen Curtis made it through one season before disappearing. Sample episode. The magician is asked by the mother of a plane crash victim to check into a possible conspiracy. He discovers that the plane crash was staged. This was a fun, non-violent alternative to all those shows with guns and killing. When Anthony Blake was confronted by thugs, he would assault them with doves. I'm, I'm not kidding. Bixby actually learned how to do the magic for this role. I was really sorry when this show was canceled. I, I really enjoyed it. Police Story, NBC. Anthology series featuring the personal lives of the men and women of the Los Angeles Police Department, starring assorted people, lasted six seasons. This show served as a way to test pilots for Policewoman, Joe Forrester, and David Cassidy, Man Undercover. Hawkins, CBS, 
Billy Jim Hawkins was a very clever defense attorney whose draw and laid back manner often fooled his adversaries into underestimating his skills as an attorney. Billy Jim's office was located in a small town in West Virginia, although his cases often took him to other places around the country, starring Jimmy Stewart, Struther Martin. Hawkins shared his time slot with Shaft, lasted eight episodes. I'm including this because I'm endlessly fascinated by the volume of failed shows that the networks churned out. I mean, come on, Jimmy Stewart, Southern Lawyer. How's that going to fail? I'll discuss this after I briefly cover... Shaft! CBS. Based on the movies of the same name, John Shaft is a two-fisted black New York private eye. Shaft's flashy lifestyle and Isaac Hayes' theme are still with us, but the movie's violence and Shaft's extracurricular activities have been toned down a bit. Starring Richard Roundtree and Eddie Barth, Shaft shared its time slot with Hawkins. Lasted eight episodes. Toned down? Are you kidding me? CBS turned Shaft into Mannix. So, did you notice the shared time slot thing CBS tried here? I think most of you keen-eyed observers could easily suss out that Hawkins and Shaft were aimed at exactly the same demographic. Why else would anyone be confused when turning into CBS on Tuesday at 9.30 to see an old, slow-walking white dude hobbling around West Virginia one week and a fast-talking, womanizing young black guy in leather smashing heads in New York City the next they seem the perfect match. No confusion at all. I don't know what CBS programmers were thinking at the time, but it must have involved drugs. Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice, ABC. Bob and Carol Sanders are a young couple who are definitely part of the hip generation. Their slightly older friends, Ted and Alice Henderson, are a little stodgy and shocked by things like swimming in the buff, Starring Robert Urich, Ann Archer, David Spielberg, and Anita Gillette. Lasted seven episodes. Sample episode. Ted fires his secretary because he believes she's developed amorous feelings for him. Meanwhile, Lizzie prepares a family dinner for a school project. Twelve episodes were actually produced, but the show was canceled after only seven aired. The movie was known for its risque portrayal of free love, sexual frustration, and personal jealousies. Even the toned-down version for TV was just too much for a 70s TV audience. Oh, I should add that I was in love with Anita Gillette. Oh, and one last thing, Jodie Foster appeared in five of the episodes. I'm skipping over Love Story. No, not the Love Story. Bye-bye, Doc Elliot. Ah, finally a winner. Kojak, CBS. Lieutenant Theo Kojak is the main character in this popular television police drama. Kojak is a tough cop, but his trademark is a fondness for lollipops. Despite his difficult work, he tirelessly brings criminals to justice while staying upbeat and good-natured. Starring... Telly Savalas, Dan Frazier, Kevin Dobson, George Savalas, lasted five seasons. Sample episode. The entire precinct is shocked when one of their most trusted officers, Tom Donnelly, is shot dead carrying $10,000 in his pocket. Kojak has just 48 hours to clear Donnelly's name and make sure he gets buried with honors. Fun fact. Kojak is actually a Polish name, but because Telly was cast in the role, they just pretended it was Greek. Adam's Rib, ABC. This TV series is based on the movie Adam's Rib from 1949, which starred Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn. This TV show stars Blythe Danner and Ken Howard. For God's sake, it didn't even make it through the season. But Danner did manage to pop out that crazy woman Gwyneth Paltrow from her hoo-hoo. Roll out, CBS. 
This soul food version of MASH features the jivin outfit. I didn't write that. Of mostly black truck drivers for the Red Bull Express who hauled supplies to the front in France during World War II. Starring Stu Gilliam, Hilly Hicks, Mel Stewart, Garrett Morris, Val Bisoglio, and Ed Begley Jr. Cancelled halfway through the year. Sample episode. Volunteer drivers are needed to transport highly sensitive mortar shells over bad roads. Sweet thinks getting the spot will make him a hero with associated perks, while Jed is concerned over his mortality. Larry Gelbart and Gene Reynolds, who gave us MASH, didn't have, it seems, what it took to get roll out off the ground. While MASH moralized about the Korean War, Rollout contended with the difficulties of being a black man in the army. After it was canceled, it was replaced by Good Times, which would run for six seasons. Needles and Pins, NBC. Nathan Davidson is the owner of the L'Oreal Fashion House, a manufacturer of women's clothing located in New York City's Garment District. His business partner is his dilettante brother-in-law, Harry Karp. Wendy Nelson, the daughter of a friend of Nathan's, has just moved to New York City from Nebraska and taken the job with L'Oreal as a fashion designer. She must adjust to the hectic pace of life in New York City. Starring Norman Fell, Louis Nye, Deirdre Lenihan, Sandra Deal, and Bernie Koppel lasted 10 episodes. Sample episode. Nathan falls for a glamorous new fashion designer and fails to notice that her business ideas and work habits are bankrupting his company. 14 episodes were actually created, but the show was put in the bargain bin after only 10. Maybe I should have said hung out to dry. Uh, oh, well. Girl with something extra. NBC. Sally and John Burton are normal, cute newlyweds attempting to begin a quiet new life together. The only problem is Sally has the power of extrasensory perception, or ESP. Sally's skills at mind reading keep getting in the way of their marriage and get her and John into plenty of wacky situations. Starring Sally Fields and John Davidson. Lasted one season. Sample episode. Sally feels jealousy when John is asked to pose nude in a woman's magazine. Okay, I have no idea how ESP would affect this episode's premise. I guess it was kind of a modernized version of Bewitched. The series was created by Canadian Bernie Slade, who had better luck with The Flying Nun and The Partridge Family. I'm not bothering with Carlucci's department because, frankly, I'm exhausted. And I'm sure you are also. And besides, it only lasted 11 episodes. What a lot of shows. What a ton of failures. Lots of famous performers, repurposed, well-known movies, and previous hits, experienced producers going down in flames. This was, and continues to be, the entertainment business. The road to success is littered with failures. But why do they keep putting on shows that fail? Because you just never know. Till next time, denizens, be seeing you. <laughs> <laughs>